done this morning. Look how much just stamped and training her. Look at this. This is Allie. Been able to rub her bag just after a few days. I've been just practicing rubbing on her. Now I'm practicing on with a rag cleaner. So she's been really good. I've been really pleased with that. So. Good way to start the morning. Rain, rain, rain. It is rained. I'm not complaining because it's got everything looking good. The salad tarps are doing great. There's been water underneath. We're going to start moving the salad tarps back during rain and covering it back up. That will help um, with the worms and making sure they're hydrated with earthworms. Uh, but look at my fall cucumbers are doing great. I um, actually got some cucumbers started and probably, man, 100 blooms. So they're doing really good. We got all the panels up and the tomatoes up, or tomato steaks up right there uh, during all the rain. We got those moved, so that way we'll go ahead and get that somewhat chopped and dropped. And either I'm going to put the chickens there, or I might chop and drop that and make that a brassica spot, but silage tarp at least for the next few days. Today's journey is to get these few, these last panels down. The the pea, I mean, the beans are pretty much done. What they're producing now is just not good quality stuff. Um, it will go along with this, and that actually will make a full chicken permaculture bed. Corn's doing great. Um, I do got to, I'm going to probably hoe around some of the corn just to get some of that stuff so it's not competing with that, uh, with that uh, weed that's growing up there. So I'm going to go and get this, uh, the, the panels off here. That way we'll be ready and we'll go cut them and then uh, we'll be set to go. So we got these these off there. You see they still got good mounds. Our goal is to leave the mounds just like they are all through here. So we're not gonna leave, we're gonna put chickens on it, but we're not gonna do it to a point where they're gonna just tear the rows up. So our goal is to try to um, not till as much because what, what we have found out is uh, once you silage tarp this, um, the last thing you wanna do is then turn around and, and retill it once you get it off because then we're opening all that back up. So the goal is to smother it Leave it like it is, we're gonna, you know, chop and drop, leave like it is, and that way our hopefully our rows won't be hurt. So the main thing is we're gonna go and get the chicken net set up, but I wanna show you this. You know, we've we've been putting our our T posts and our trellises right there. Now, the one the trellises that we have the, the beans on right here, because they were still making beans but just not heavy, we cut them off at the root. So basically now all these here, all these pods that's still on here guess what that will be our beans for next season so we will actually collect these beans and these are the ones that we were not crazy about these were what we call the florida pole beans they stopped um actually a, a grower here couldn't even get them anymore so one co-op had some that they had from a year ago and said you know if we don't collect this seed it may not be available next year and it wasn't so now i'm gonna keep this bean going just because you can't get it in this area anymore so you know you got they're like a speckled so they kind of look kind of crazy but um, basically we will take these harvest these off and this will be ones we'll dry for next year for next season so sustainability perfect so we're gonna go and get this chicken net up you know I put it up the other day on that last vlog I showed you we, we had it ready and we put it up over here on this side well 
the wiring was just a little too big for that section so we said you know what we might just go and silage tarp this and this will be our fall garden uh, for turnips and things like that next to the cucumbers so since we got the bigger spot now we're going to go ahead and make this the permaculture chicken spot and then whatever's not covered with it we'll go with after the corn is harvested we'll chop and drop what's left and then that will all be cover crop as we go into winter so none of that will be where it's doing anything but maybe growing venison <laughs> so we're gonna probably plant some rye and clover which are great 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 deer attractants so we we may even have some uh I have a deer plot way down there and way down there so I can see right here so you never know if we get corn and then deer off our our garden I'm, I'm pretty happy with that so now let's go ahead and get that chicken head up and we will um see how the weather's going to do we got a little sun coming out but it's still we've got a chance of rain again today about 60 percent so we're going to try to do this and get it done before uh, that starts note if you've never worked with uh, this electric chicken wire it can be a challenge I guess that's the best word to say so there's an art to it what I always like to do is I like to um, basically get my net out and make sure it's all in the one way you don't want to ever pick your poles up because when you pick your poles up the netting gets under the, the actual um, where it sticks into the ground the actual stake and then it gets just complicated and it makes you want to lose your religion so what I always do is lay it out, get it in a straight line, and then stand it up and start moving it as I go. As long as you get the main first piece in, it helps kind of make it go smoother. Um, but I learned the hard way. I got it all tangled up, and it took me about two hours to get it untangled. Um, so it's difficult to work with, but it is great, especially if you're moving chickens. But uh, let's go and get started on that. Okay, you see how it wads up. So basically, I take a piece out at a time, lay it down, then stand it up take a piece at a time lay it down and stand it up as you see this net is not up the best right now remember your goal is not to get it tight and pretty right now your goal is to get it up so it's not going to tangle up so now once we get it all up then we will actually come back tighten it straighten it again you're going to have to, you're going to, have to weed it around it because you're going to lose your it's going to ground out and not be charged if you don't go ahead and uh get some of the weeds out from under it anyway but you got to stake it down and all that good stuff but Right now, you just need to get it up so then you can work with it because it is too hard to work with and try to straighten it, tighten it, and all that when you literally can't do it when it's in a wad like this. So what we'll do is keep doing just what we're doing. Remember, don't pick up. So I'm going to try to do this one-handed, so I'm going to tell you probably what not to do when you do this. But see how it's got those hooks? What you don't want to do is just wrap all this netting around it. So what I always do is I tend to grab it from right there. See, there's one piece already around it. So that's what you don't want. One hand is kind of hard to do this. Though. All right, so say for instance, it's like this right there. What I always do is I'll kind of grab it from there and walk it. That way nothing's around the hook at the bottom. And then when I throw it over to actually stand it up, I don't have to worry about untangling every piece of it. You got that piece up and you see how it's kind of twisted. So again, take from the bottom. I'll spin it that way. That way I know it won't get caught up. Make sure it drags the ground. And boom, there you go. Pops out. But if you to pick that up and get all the wire under it, it gets it where you can't hardly work with it. So very important. See how it's leaning? It's okay right now. Again, your goal is not to get, I mean, that right there is not going to work. But if you get it like up, then you can tighten it all together. So same thing. Here we go. You don't want that to get under the net, so I pull it from the wire first. Keep it where that's not gonna get wire under it. Walk it, push it under, there you go. You pick that thing up, get wire under, that makes it almost impossible to deal with. All right, so net's lightly up. You see it's still not tight. The bottoms are tight, but the top is not tight. Well, the bottom is tight, but there's some spots I still gotta weed eat. 
but the top is still very loose. So what we'll do is actually take our pull post, or our pull strings for this one. And you see, as soon as you pull it, it's gonna tighten it up, same way this way. And then what we'll do is every corner, we'll go back and actually tie it up to something on the other side, like a little tent post or something like that. That way it keeps it tight and keeps the birds from really trying to get out. Now, what you need to do is weed it around the bottom. That way it won't lose ground. Also, make sure that you have a tight fit to the ground. So what we'll do is come back and put those little plastic, uh, you know, like uh, if you go camping, you have those little yellow plastic uh, little stakes. You can get it at like Walmart for like, I mean, 97 cents. If you want the ones that are a little bit nicer, you can get the ones that are a nail with a little plastic head on them. But the main thing is you want plastic touching the wire so that way it, does, it insulates it. Now you will have to, I think, once you get your, your setup done, and you get your charger on if you're using solar or whatever, just remember you're using a low impedance charger. And uh, of course, you, then you'll ground it that way. So then you need to test it, make sure it's doing well. Um, chickens are notorious for getting out. They're almost like goats. That's why I don't have goats. But chickens, I'm excited about it because it gets to do this area, but I'm kind of nervous about it because we always have a fully enclosed cage. So uh, it's going to be fun. So we might have to clip, uh, clip one side of their wings. That way they won't fly out. But we'll, we'll, we'll test that as it comes. But we're going to go and tighten it up. I just wanted to show you how we put the net up. And then we will actually get a full tightness on it. And it will be ready for chickens. The only thing that we'd be lacking is we've got the stuff and wood to build the little uh, chicken tractor that will go in there. Um, it, it's going to be built kind of like the, the chick shawl that Justin Rhodes used uh, because it seems like it moves a little bit easier with those big wheels versus the smaller wheels. So we're going to see. That's our next project to do with the chickens and permaculture chickens. We've got all the stuff ready for basically uh, production or setup for fall anyway. Uh, we'll actually start doing soil blocks to put our seeds in and putting them indoors because it's too hot in our area. So we are really getting the fall mode. We hope that you've enjoyed this video. Hope the permaculture chicken setup netting has been great. And again, like I always say, God bless you. Thank you for uh, subscribing and watching our show and our channel. And uh, again, God bless. Happy homesteading, y'all.